So you can see that we're literally controlling like the rhythmic sequence of how this knob moves and it's happening in time with our beat. Hey guys, what's happening? It's Dean from Electrona Sounds. Stick around. Today we're going to talk about using the new perforator gate effect inside of OM. We're going to use its MIDI CC output and we're going to automate some knobs on our synths. Stick around and check it out. Electronic Sounds Audio, the YouTube channel for you. I've started by opening up the OM app and I've loaded up a drum loop at 120 beats per minute. And it sounds like this. I exported this from the Groove Writer app into Audio Share and then loaded the loop into OM. And what we're going to do is we're going to start by uh, making a master track and putting a limiter on that just to make sure that we're protecting our ears, our headphones, and our speakers. And we're going to go ahead and add uh, here a um, mix bus. And we're going to go ahead and make this um, bus H. And we're going to go ahead and send all of our tracks to miss excuse me, to mix bus, bus H, and that's going to now get a limiter put on it. We'll click the effect tab here, and we'll click audio uh, unit extension, and we're going to load the limiter from Amazing Noises. If you guys have seen uh, my other videos, you know I'm really fond of uh, this limiter. We'll turn the saturation up by default to like, uh, you know, 0.05, like the tiniest little bit of saturation goes a long way, I think. We'll turn the input gain up just a couple of decibels, like I've got it at 1.9, um, and we'll leave the ceiling at uh, 0.5. This is just going to make sure that nothing goes over the zero decibel um, and that we're getting maximum volume. So we're going to continue routing all of our tracks as we add them uh, to route to that master bus now. In fact, let's label this channel 2. Let's go ahead and label this master bus. Done. Okay, fantastic. Let's just play this and double check our settings in that limiter real quick. Yeah, everything looks good. We're just getting a tiny little bit of action here. You know, if you're getting like, you know, 10 or 15 decibels of attenuation, you're pushing your mix a little too loud into the limiter. So we just want to, you know, keep our eye on that as we progress through, you know, making this. So what we'll do now is we'll go ahead and add ourselves a new track and we'll go ahead and get ourselves a synthesizer to put over this drum beat. We'll go ahead and use an audio unit extension. And uh, for this today, why don't we try the... Um Let's go with the Z on synth for now. Okay, fantastic. And right off the jump, we're going to click this and we're going to change it to mix bus H so that the audio output of our Z on synth is by default running into the master bus. And what we can do is we can kind of scoot that over to the side and keep our master bus all the way on the you know right-hand side just for visual uh, sake. And what we want now is we want some way to sequence Xeon to create like a, you know, a bass line or a synth line or something like that over our drum part. And then we will use Perforator to automate some of the knobs inside of Xeon. What we'll do is we're going to start by loading up a sequencer. We'll load up a heart, uh, excuse me, we'll load up an audio unit extension. And we're going to choose a Rosetta bass line for this to control the Xeon synth. We're going to go ahead and put that right here and we're going to tell the Xeon synth that it's being controlled by Rosetta Baseline okay so I clicked the little uh, browser window here which using Rosetta Baseline so now if I you know let's see I like to write in the key of F minor quite a bit and so we'll choose like minor pentatonic for this and we'll generate a part and if we press play now we'll have Xeon uh, playing over our drum loop <laughs> Let's go ahead and leave that melodic pattern for now. Cool. Let's we'll see if we can't find, um, you know, a bass line inside of Xeon that's maybe a little bit more appropriate here. Well, I kind of like the way this is sounding already. Cool. Okay. 
what let's do then is we'll go ahead and add ourselves the perforator and then we're going to use the, the perforator's MIDI CC output to tweak some parameters inside of Xeon. Now we're not actually using perforator to do any gating in this example. So this is where it gets a little bit tricky. We're going to add ourselves a new track. And what we're going to do here is we're going to add ourselves just something that we're not going to be using. So we'll just create basically a dummy track. So this is taking anything from, you know, the input of bus E and it's going to send it to this track. But we don't have anything on bus E. We don't have a bus E and we're not going to create a bus E. So what we're going to do is we're just going to use this channel to hold our perforator. And you'll see where I'm going with this in just a sec. What we want is we want to be able to use these, you know, gating values to control knob movement, but we don't actually want to do, um, you know, any gating with this. And here's what we're going to do. First thing is we need to tell OM um, that perforator is a modulation source for MIDI. And now we're going to do that is we're going to click in the browser up here, and we're going to go to MIDI control, and where there's MIDI sources here, it'll tell you that there's no MIDI sources connected right now, and you need to, you know, tap here to make a connection. And what we'll do is we'll choose perforator, and now perforator can be used as a MIDI modulation source inside of OM. And I'll show you how we're going to do that here. I think it's important to figure out exactly what we'd like to automate inside of Xeon, right? So if we press play here and mess with some of the knobs, we can find something that we might like to automate. Typically, you know, the filter cutoff would be a pretty obvious starting point for something like this. It's really easy to hear, you know, what we're actually doing. So let's attempt to automate the filter cutoff knob using um, the perforator plugin here. On the Xeon channel, I'm going to click down here. We're going to go ahead and rename this to baseline. Okay. And we'll click these little MIDI sliders up here. And we've got sort of the MIDI window here. I'm not real familiar with this, so, so bear with me, guys. Um, and what we're going to do is we're just going to um, scroll down inside of these options. This is all of the knobs, all of the things that are available for us to um, automate inside of the Xeon synth. And basically what we're looking for is we're looking for the filter cutoff. You can see that there's quite a bit of options. Um, this is layer 2 filter cutoff. Um, I want layer 1 filter cutoff. So it's going to be layer 1 filter... There it is, filter cutoff. Boy, I took forever to find. Okay, and we'll set that to channel one, which is perforator's top row um, of, I don't know what you call them, little gate, you know, sliders or whatever. And we're going to put this on CC1. Okay, and we're going to press play. Okay, and you can see already that we're tweaking the hell out of this knob here. So if we bring this down and we scroll over, we bring perforator up. Now, we, we have, you know, depending on what the pattern is, that's how we're controlling this knob. So we can, let's see here, start this, you know, let's see, we'll keep that on 16 steps, but rather, um, what do we want here? Yeah, here we go. We can turn this time resolution down to like eighth notes, and now we're moving the knob quite a bit slower. Okay, so what we're doing, I'm going to, to make it a little bit easier, we'll um, see, unlink these, and I'm going to just turn the second row down, because the second row is transmitting MIDI CC number 2, and the first row is transmitting MIDI CC number 1. So if I just remove all of these slots here, we're on yeah, eighth notes. Okay, the filter's not moving, and it's set all the way, you know, down by default. So check this out, you guys. Okay, so now we're getting just casual movement on this, right? So see how it's opening and closing? We're controlling how much it's opening and closing, and we're controlling when it's opening and closing. So if we have just a little bar here, it's only going to move that filter up a little bit. Whereas if we have a large bar here, or all the way to the top, it's going to move that filter all the way to the top. And it's going to do it in time, you know, with our beat. Now let's see 
what happens if we just start scrolling through presets, but we leave the um, automation set the same. Well, that's a good example there. Whoops. Sorry about that. We'll back to Z on here. And we'll... So see, you can see we're automating that filter cutoff. Bring perforator up again. So you can see, we can change this to like even 16s. 16s might even be more appropriate for this kind of a thing here. So you can see that we're literally controlling like the rhythmic sequence of how this knob moves and it's happening in time with our beat. Now what we can do is we could maybe assign this to some more parameters inside of Xeon and get more than one knob automating at the same time using this exact same pattern. Let's check that out. Let's just get a little jiggy with it so that you guys can see just exactly how far you can take this. I'm going to press play and I'm going to go in and start just assigning a load of parameters inside of Xeon to follow this parameter change and the MIDI CC that we're sending out here from Perforator. Okay. So for now, we'll just X this out, okay? We're going to go back into the channel tab and then we're going to click the little MIDI sliders, right? We're going to get back into that parameter list of Xeon and let's just start getting jiggy with it. We're going to click learn. This channel one, right? There we go. Now when you assign more than, when you assign more than one um, parameter to be automated by um, perforator here, it's gonna put that little let's show you again here. It's gonna put that little, you know, uh, exclamation point up, and that's just letting you know that it's, it's not like an emergency, it's not a problem, but it's letting you know that there is more than one um, destination for that assignment. A channel, a MIDI channel one, MIDI CC, CC number one, um, that there's more than one destination that that's going to. So it's not like a freak out, it's just there to let you know. So we'll get back into that menu. And we'll, I'm just picking things at random. And I'm just assigning them, like literally random stuff. Okay, so now we've gotten a little bit jiggy with it. As you can see, you can just start automating these knobs like crazy town, you guys. Obviously, this is a little bit, you know, screwy and not super pleasant, but you get the drift. This is how you do it. You're going to go in and you're going to assign perforator as a MIDI source, right? And then you're going to go into whatever synth you want it on, okay? And you're going to click those MIDI knobs, and that's going to give you all those parameters. Now, let's keep in mind that perforator is doing uh, MIDI CC1 as well as MIDI CC2, okay? So this is MIDI CC1, and if I start putting stuff on the bottom row, I can assign, like in the same synth here, if we go, you know, open that up, go back to the parameters and choose some stuff that's not um, assigned yet, I could assign this to channel one, but CC number two, okay? Channel one, CC number two, channel one, CC number two, and now that second row of controls down here is automating this stuff, okay? So let's check that out. I mean, obviously, we're getting a little screwy with the way it sounds. You know, you're going to need to be careful as to what you're automating and be a little bit, you know, purposeful and specific as to what you're automating. But this is how you do it, guys. Drop Perforator in, go up to the settings here, click MIDI Control, right, and MIDI Sources, and make sure that Perforator is selected, okay? It won't be by default. We went through that, okay? And then all you have to do is choose what synth you want it on. In this case, we're using Xeon. You're going to open that up. You're going to go to those settings. You're going to go to the parameters. You'll choose one, and you'll set it to MIDI channel 1, CC1 for the top row, 
CC2 for the bottom row. And now you're automating those knobs and stuff. Now, let's say that you don't want to automate, you know, from 0 to 100 every single time. You can just click this range percent here and say you want it to go from like 50% at the minimum value all the way to like say not quite all the way open at the top but almost open at the top you can adjust this is you know the bottom of the knob and up here at the top is the top of the knob so you can adjust just exactly how much movement you're getting on the knobs for instance here you know we've got these knobs moving these really dramatic amounts so that I can show you how this process works but you might not want to move you know 16 knobs really super dramatically you might want to move just a couple of knobs really subtly or you know in some real specific ways and whatnot. That's why it's called parameter locking because what we're doing is we're like locking, um, you know, we're locking these parameters to the step because we're in time. We got 16 steps here, so we're locking these parameters to the 16th note in this case. I hope this makes sense, guys, and I hope you found some benefit to learning how you can use Perforator as a, you know, MIDI modulator inside of OM. Now, you could do this and keep it as a gate the whole time if you just don't put it on its own individual track. You know, we could have just put a perforator on this track, but if we were to have put it on the Xeon track, this would be gating the audio as well as turning the knobs, which, you know, sometimes can lead to a desirable effect, but in this case, for showing you how the process works, I feel that it's easier to put it on its own dummy track that's not actually putting any volume, but just using uh, this as a a, a, a holding place to keep that perforator into our arm session. Um, you definitely want to save, so we'll do, you know, save and give our session a name. Tutorial. You know. Cool. I think I just un saved the untitled, but you get the drift. Uh, definitely save your work. Um, I hope you guys have found this useful. Thanks for watching. Hey guys, it takes a lot of work and time to make all these videos, and I really appreciate the support I've gotten so far. If you want to help support the work that I do in this channel, please consider checking out some of my sample packs over on electronasounds.com, or maybe become a patron for as little as $1 a month, and you can get yourself some bonus downloads as well as supporting creative content here on YouTube. Thanks for watching, guys. We're going to use this to automate some knobs inside of our synths and stuff, and it'll be geeky and awesome.